by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. Now, this be the question. Dr. Price, does 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 8, she's centered down on verse 8, but I think I needed to read the other scriptures. Okay, does 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 8, have some relevance to the message regarding fail-proof living? By the way, the scriptures that we read, first of all, in 2 Peter, our subject is fail-proof living. So she asked the question, does 1 Peter 2, 8 have some relevance to <clears throat> the message regarding fail-proof living? It says that some stumble because they disobey, disbelieve, and ultimately reject God's word. Who are those who will stumble because of the stone? I might be off and out of context, but want direction. Now, the question was, does 1 Peter 2, 8 have anything to do with fail-proof living? No. No. It doesn't, as such. However, it's interesting, the question, and I want to answer it now. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Because what, what does that mean? Stone of stumbling. I could just say it, but I think it might be more beneficial to actually read it. Because, again, somebody else may have the same question, or it may come up. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. She says, who are these who stumble because of the stone? It says, she says that some stumble because they disobey or disbelieve and ultimately reject God's word. That will definitely cause you to stumble. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you have it, set, have it. All right, look at verse Well, let me see. Let's start with verse 21. For since he, or rather for since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request or require a sign, and Greeks or Gentiles seek after wisdom. But, uh, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. Now, she asked the question, who are those who stumble? Well, it was the Jews, the Jewish nation as a whole. Obviously, there were individual Jews that accepted Jesus, saw him as Messiah. We know that. Peter, James, John, all these were Jewish people. But as a nation, as the religious leaders, as the religious establishment, they rejected Jesus. And they stumble at him. In fact, as a group, they are still stumbling today. They are still, this is not a criticism, just an observation. They are still looking for Messiah. And he came 2,000 years ago. But because of who he was and the way he came, they stumble at that. They, they tripped over this idea of what? Sacrifice, dying, crucifixion. They thought he was coming as a conquering hero to lift the Roman yoke off their shoulders and reestablishing, reestablish them as the apple of God's eye, as the leading nation of the world, as they were during the time that Solomon was king. Are you following me? So they, they stumble, and they're still stumbling at this Jesus, over this Jesus. He was a stumbling block. God laid in Zion a stone, and they, just, they stumbled over it. They didn't see it. So that's what that meant. It doesn't have anything to do, per se, with fail-proof living. So I hope... Hope the person was here today, and I hope they 
understood that. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm ready to move on. Now, last time, I made the statement, and then we started talking about this, that the exercise of faith, remember Taylor told us to add to our faith different things, virtue, knowledge, etc., 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 and we were in the process of dealing with those things that we were to add to our faith. We've already established the fact that we as children of God have faith. We have it. We don't have to go somewhere and get it. We have it. If we have been born of the Spirit of God, and we are children of God, we have all the faith that we need. There was no shortage when God dealt the measure of faith to us. But it is our responsibility to develop that faith. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, I made this statement. The exercise of faith is based on knowledge. Knowing the will of God. We can only exercise faith where the will of God is known. I made that statement. So let's look at spiritual things first. Talking about knowledge now. Spiritual knowledge about the benefits of being a Christian. Or do we have any benefits? You know, that, that's an issue. I know when I applied for jobs in the past, I, one of the things I always wanted to know, well, what's, what's my benefit? Do I have any benefits? I'm not going to leave one go- job that gives me five weeks paid vacation to go to another job that doesn't give me any paid vacation. You know what I mean? All things being equal. So I want to know what are my benefits? Do I have any benefits? Do I have any? Is there a, is there a reason for me to leave this job and come to this job? If I'm not at least on a, on a lateral move where I'm going for, from a million dollars a year salary, oh, don't I wish, hallelujah, to a million dollars a year salary, it'd be kind of fallacious for me to go from a million dollars a year salary to $350,000 a year. That's not a good move. I, don't, I personally don't think that's a good move. Amen. So we have both spiritual knowledge to gain and also physical or material knowledge. So we're talking about spiritual knowledge first. We're talking, we're talking about some of the things that we have as a result. Benefits of being a Christian. Number one, we talked about power. We have the Holy Spirit. So we're not left to do this in our own strength. I like that and thank God for it. Then we talked about how does he come, the Holy Spirit. How do we get it? We talked about that. Then we left off last time talking about divine means of communication with the Heavenly Father. And prayer is that link up. Prayer is that channel by which we can converse with the Heavenly Father. And there are two kinds of prayer or kinds of praying. One is with the understanding, our natural mind, and then also with the Spirit. And I think Christians just kind of take it for granted. I can pray and ask God for whatever I want. Just think about it. Think about this. Uh, we live in a democracy, and we have a president. He's our the chief, commander-in-chief of the military force. He, El Presidente, he's the president. And uh, Mr. Bush, he's the president. And uh, we pay his salary. Brother Man gets his salary from the taxes that us pay. But you know what? I can't go to the White House and talk to George whenever I want to. I'm paying the man's salary, but I can't just walk in. Say, I want to talk to the president. So they'll run me through 49 different scams. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't just do that. But I can talk to the president of the universe. I have a privilege to talk to El Shaddai whenever I want to. And the beautiful thing about it, the lines are never busy. That's awesome. So we want to talk about that. Now, uh, we looked at Mark chapter 11. Let's go back there and look at it again quickly. Mark chapter 11. Again, all of these things you probably already know or certainly have been exposed to them. But I find out that we need to have review. I know that's what keeps me sharp is I stay on review. I don't let down. See, you could get tired and say, well, I already know that. I read that 900 times. Well, read it another 900 times. Keep you sharp, keep you safe. I do it all the time. My, my format of, of primary Bible study, unless I'm just studying specifically for a particular issue or inspiration that the Spirit of God gives me about a particular subject matter, you know, to deal with, I have a particular way of studying. 